I've always wanted to try Burger Pancro 400, so let's see what kind of performance it turns in. I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Grey Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Our Tri-X represented in blue as all the others. Burger 400 here in the red. And it's a pretty good straight line uh, throughout the whole thing. So they track each other pretty close through the whole thing. Um, where Tri-X has that uh, definite belly out in the upper shadows, lower mids. There's a hint of that in the burger, but nowhere near as distinct. Uh, the toes are fairly close to one another. We do have a much higher base fog. We'll see how that turns out in the actual print. But again, base fog could be a number of factors, including age, storage, all that sorts of stuff. So. I would take the base fog with a grain of salt that could change through a variety of reasons. But overall, I think we're going to have a pretty good performance side by side uh, since our curves are fairly identical uh, in overall shape. So let's go ahead and look at that print and see what it looks like. Okay, here we have our Tri-X 400. Here we have our Burger Pancro 400. This is a little underdeveloped. We can see that with the whites being a little bit more dull. And we are having a little less shadow separation through here, 
which is a little bit more sloping toe. When it comes to the spectral sensitivity, we are not quite even all the way through our columns. We are a little lighter on the red, a little bit darker on the cyan. We're seeing the little bit darker cyan here with the shirt. Part of that is development, part of that is spectral. One other thing we can see immediately is the burger film is a little bit coarser grain for a 400 speed. How much coarser? Well, let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look. Here we can immediately see our grain is much coarser even though it is a 400 speed film. It is exposed at 400. That did give me the same shadow detail through this portion and at the bottom of the gray card as the triax, but we are getting less separation through this portion, which is that sloping toe. Here we can see the silhouette of the fuzzy edge of the shirt against the background. We are still getting fine detail with that. We're also seeing that coarser grain and the amount of shadow separation in the wrinkles of the shirt. Here with the ribbed portion of my collar, we are still getting nice sharp detail. The stitching is still nice and clear, but the weave of the fabric is a little harder to distinguish versus what is actually just coarse grain. I feel it is still fairly visible uh, compared to some other 400 speed films we've seen. It's not the coarsest uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it is definitely more coarse than the Tri-X. And here with the detail of my skin, we can see uh, the detail under my eye is still visible, is still discernible, but not quite as sharp as the Tri-X because of that coarser grain. Uh, but we can still see pores in the forehead, um, the individual hairs in my eyebrow and so forth. So decent performance. It's still a good 400 speed film. It's very similar to other 400s we've looked at and will continue to look at. Uh, but it's just not the finest grain 400 speed film. It does have that long sloping toe, so it's going to give us a little less separation in our shadows, but the highlights are separating fairly well, and I would say are pretty much on par with Triax in that regard. All right, that's pretty much it for this film this week. Thank you for watching. If you would like to help support this channel, you can go to my Patreon page. You can get prints, lab towels, and t-shirts from the links down in the description. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.